Welcome once again to Coffee Woo -woo. Conversations. <laughs> Tim Arroyo. Yes. Yes. And obviously I'm Dustin Box. Jamie's not here. No, we kicked him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to make it without him. Yeah, it'll be difficult, but we can. I think we can manage. Yeah. I have, um, so uh, today what, what I was thinking about, you know, obviously last week, uh, me and Jamie sort of talked about um, when we fell in love with Jesus and mm. stuff. And that actually sort of like got me thinking later just in the context of my personal journey of falling in love with Jesus was really um, actually intimately connected with corporate worship mm. in a church gathering and church setting. So like my whole life, like journey was like very much uh, connected and involved with worshiping in a community, corporate worship, as well as personal worship, you know? Right. And so I thought it'd be fun to sort of bring you in, uh, talk about worship. Yeah. You're a worship pastor. That is what I do. You know, you got a lot on your plate. You got a lot of stuff you're leading. And um, I thought it'd be fun just to sort of like, uh, one, we can talk about some practical stuff, but also sort of dissect the sort of difference between corporate worship and private worship or hmm. personal, not private, but personal yeah, yeah, worship, yeah. you know, in that mm -hmm. context. So maybe uh, help, uh, help me understand, help our listeners understand sort of for you where the what is the difference between corporate worship mm -hmm. what happens there and personal worship sure well um let me think here okay um <laughs> sorry uh i'm not prepared but i am prepared in the lord that's right uh i think for me the primary difference is there's just something i, I think these are two two things that actually every Christian, honestly, I really believe every Christian needs. Yeah. I know we go through seasons, you know, there are probably some people in seasons where maybe they don't have a community of people mm -hmm. that they're really worshiping with, but the Lord, you know, I, I believe the Lord will eventually plant you in one, but yeah. um, I think these are, there's things that happen in a corporate expression of worship where you have many hearts gathered worshiping Jesus mm -hmm. that just don't happen when you're by yourself. Yeah. Same way, there's things that happen when I'm alone with the Lord mm -hmm. and it's just me ministering to his heart yeah. that just don't happen in a large room with people. And so I think the atmosphere of agreement and faith to see the miraculous released, yeah. I think there's something that pleases the heart of God because obviously he's pleased with our, just when we come to him in worship and when we just love to be with him, like he loves that. Yeah. But I think there's something else that gets pleased in the heart of God when he sees regions and towns and states and nations gather. Yeah. You really see, I think in the Old Testament especially, you see the God of nations, mm -hmm. the God who wanted the heart and the worship of entire groups of people. Yeah. And a lot of that expression wasn't just everybody individually at home just doing their thing, yeah. but it was these corporate, large scale, sometimes national gatherings of yeah. declaring covenant with God and worship to God. And there's just something that moves his heart and moves his hand to start moving on behalf of his people that you don't experience, I don't think, when yeah. it's just by yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, it sort of reminds me of that, that prayer, John 15, John 17, John 15. John teen. John teen. Um, it's Jesus, Jesus' final prayer, yeah. where he's like, make them one yeah. as, as, as me and you are one. Right. You know, they'll know, um, it's, it's like this, this connection of like the world knowing the truth of the gospel and, and right. you know what I mean? The ministry of Jesus based on the unity right. of the believers. And there's sort of like this, this, this dynamic that's achieved or that happens when believers come together right. in a form and in a place of worship. Right. You know? Yeah. And obviously in this season, like a lot of that got taken away from us. Yeah. Oh, like, totally. You know what I mean? Just through, through the global pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so it's been interesting to see the Lord for our community, for the whole global church, just like kind of shift the scales. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, because that's what God does. He makes lemon out of lemonade or lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> he makes lemons out of lemonade. He could do it. Yeah. He could do it. Don't get me wrong. He'll take a lemonade. It'll be a lemon. That's right. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Praise, praise break. break. Praise break. Here we go. But um, oh, he man. takes, he makes lemonade out of lemons, meaning okay. he's using the necessary isolation. Yeah. And he's choosing to now emphasize. I feel like in this season, mm-hmm. you're all, like all of us are individual private worship. Yeah. Where because, you know, this whole situation has kind of forced us to be out of balance. Yeah. It's like it's now God has shifted what he's doing in us. The amount of people that I've been talking to about how like, yeah, just really just realizing the areas of my life that are that are falling, not falling short, but just like that are that are difficult, that are kind of untouched by his presence. The areas where I'm not experiencing breakthrough, I'm seeing parts of myself that I was unaware of. And that's something to me that gets so personified in this private place of worship yeah. where it's just you and him. It's almost like God has your full attention and totally. he's just focused on you. He's working in you. And so, yeah. but I do think like even still in the midst of it being really limited, these little blips of online worship and now yeah. we're doing like these midweek gatherings, like yeah. it's starting to bring balance back where, cause we can just get so inward and, kind of introverted in a sense mm-hmm. if all we do is just like lean into this my I'm alone with Jesus it's just me and him it's no one else like I love Jamie's post recently on social media if you don't follow Pastor Jamie you should <laughs> um, but he talked about like he's afraid that some people right. will so adapt to this isolated lifestyle that when we're all okay to get back together again we just won't whether it's yeah. out of fear yeah. or out of uh, preference and routine. Yeah. And so I think there's something to be said that right now in this season, like we're, we're appreciative for the ability to have more just one-on-one time with the Lord. Yeah. And hopefully we see now how we need to make space for it in normal life. Yeah. But like, I think it's time for us to start finding these places. I don't care if you got to find some online church somewhere every single yeah. like wherever it is if it's not a sunday morning someone somewhere yeah. is is gathering online to worship gathering yeah. in our homes now that we can yeah. um because that atmosphere of faith that atmosphere of yeah. like even beyond what he would do for us mm-hmm. the idea of my life is that i live to please the lord yeah and i know his heart is pleased in a way it would, could never be when it's just me and him yeah when i gather with my friends and family and yeah. worship it's really, it's really, really good. It, it just makes me think about like, even just the context of, of the dynamics of those two different things where both are incredibly necessary. Mm. And there's been maybe a season where a lot of people sort of like leaned on corporate worship as yeah. a crutch mm-hmm. in the context that they come in, they worship, they experience God's presence mm-hmm. and they sort of leave. And it's like this, you experience a corporate anointing, a corporate breakthrough. Yeah. Um, but they haven't stewarded or made space for that private breakthrough, that private right. time with God. Right. And like in this last season, there's been like this, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second. Mm-hmm. Like right. you have, need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. A shifting of attention, shifting of focus to sort of get the priority right. And then it's like you mm. have my heart, my expectation, my desire. Like when I think about us gathering as a church again, mm. you know, like on a Sunday morning, corporately, oh. dude. <laughs> It's going to be a party. I'm going to go nuts. Dude. But it's just the thought of like all these people that have been like pursuing this yeah. privately. You know what yeah. I mean? In their own time. We're coming together. Right. We have so much more to bring. We have so much more to offer. Yeah. So much more to engage with because you're coming in with like momentum from your private life. Mm. Private worship. Engaged yeah. with God. You know, and then you step in together corporately. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a significantly greater measure yeah. of momentum and breakthrough that happens in a corporate gathering. Yeah. So yeah. I think that like it's a it's a really powerful sort of distinction to look at, but like you said, mm. like we need to begin to lean into that corporate gathering. We need to lean into those times, mm. you know, where we're not we're yeah. not becoming numb to it, you know. Yeah, I think there's gonna be something about you're just faithful with the little we have. Yeah. So if what we have is gatherings of ten or more or ten or less, you yeah. know, then then let's let's milk that for all it's worth. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's like, it sounds like we're making a plug for, for <laughs> like, we didn't plan this. <laughs> Midweek <laughs> gatherings, sign yeah. up. A <laughs> little graphic goes across the screen. <laughs> no, like we didn't, there's no pre-planning with us yeah. or Jamie about this. It's just, that's just what's coming out of my heart. It's yeah. just this idea of like, 
the the need for both and when 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 the season is allowing for balance yeah then you know let it happen i i think the idea of corporate worship times as a crutch like can be actually a really good thing mm -hmm. as long it's yeah. like i just feel like these corporate times for me personally mm -hmm. what they've often been it's like if, if our life's a journey, almost like sailing on a boat, it's like I see these moments where like you just get a wind that pushes you. Yeah. But then at a certain point, the momentum from that gust of wind mm -hmm. stops, and like it's now it's like okay now I'm yeah now I'm paddling the boat, I'm yep. still moving forward, and and then another gust of wind comes, so it's like you're just yeah, and then like you just like have a maintain, you know, it's like our whole life isn't a corporate worship service, right? You know. Um, I, uh, that that sense of uh, being able to gather momentum in your life from mm. a corporate place of breakthrough yeah. is really powerful. You know that story where you know Saul uh, Samuel sort of like goes to his house mm. and it's before Saul's king. This is like you know what I mean. The very first king of Israel, sort of Saul, is there, and, yeah. and it says he goes into a company of the prophets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he's changed into another man. He begins to prophesy. Yeah. That was he experienced corporate breakthrough in a personal level. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I think the lesson in that is that when he left, he didn't. There's not any. At least there's no references biblically to him continuing to engage in the prophetic. Yeah. That it was like he experienced the corporate breakthrough. But he didn't grab hold of it as a sign that, like, no, this is possible for you as an individual. Right. This is possible for you to steward. You just experienced breakthrough. Now go and do something about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that, like, um, the, sort of like the great lesson in that is that, like, we we have these times of like momentum, like you're saying, but there's a moment where that corporate win sort of isn't there. Yeah. And we get to dig in. You yeah. Know what I mean, and like push push the momentum forward. It's really true, man. Like there's something about internalizing that sense of value for into for just worship and mm -hmm. intimacy with God for like the same substance of what we do when we're all corporately together, of what we've all agreed we are, that we internalize it. Like it just like it always baffles me when I look at the Old Testament and I see the people of Israel. And it's like yeah. it it almost feels like they didn't have this ability to just internalize the core value of God being their God and theirs people. It was just yes. whoever's in charge. Yeah. If we have a righteous king, we're going to be a righteous people. <laughs> it's like, and if there's an unrighteous king, I guess we'll be unrighteous too. Yeah. It's like you permission know? to, ah, well, yeah. I guess this is what we're up with. You, know? you know, it's like, what? <laughs> so it's like, it's just amazing to me that it's, yeah. it's almost like the people that became great in the Old Testament, the prophets, Moses, David, were the people that internalized the yes. value. So David yeah. approaches a Philistine army where everybody else, because there's you know, the king was kind of cowering before Goliath, yeah. so everyone else cowered. Yeah. But then David is just like internalized the value of God's like behalf, like God fighting on the yeah. behalf because he saw it in secret. Yeah, you know, and so like yeah. there's something about that secret place where. I fought a bear, I fought the lion, and it showed me that if God is with me, I can fight things larger and more, and like yeah. pe things that should kill me, I actually get victory over them. Yeah. And so because he internalized that value in the place of worship, you know, I'm about to throw my hat. <laughs> you know, and I think something about his on job site life. Yeah being filled with worship made room for that revelation to happen. Yeah. You know, that, like, I'm just preaching now. Come Bless on. God. Hey, you know what? That's okay. Do you know that David didn't have to bring his harp to work? <laughs> you realize that? Yeah. He didn't have to. No. It was actually an inconvenience. That's interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I, I once Googled all the stuff that, like, shepherds of that time had to bring with them. They had a lot of stuff. Yeah. They had a bag. They had a staff. They had a lunch, maybe. Often, yeah. like they had like a bit to carry. So for him to also add his harp yeah. was incredible inconvenience, and it wasn't actually necessary for him to be a man after God's own heart. Yeah, he didn't. You know, we don't need our guitars mm -mm. to be. But yeah, it made worship easier. It made access to that place of like communion with God because there's just something about when the the anointing comes and it's just a biblical thing of music. Yeah. So he inconvenienced himself 
purely for the sake of enhancing his worship. And that created a place for revelation to come, an internalization of the value of God that caused them to respond differently to the bear, to the lion, then to Goliath, then to the armies that Israel would face. You know, so I think there's something about what you're saying, like in this season where we're out of balance, we're a bunch of Davids in the hillsides right now. I love, I love that idea, thinking about it now, where it's like, he, he was willing to inconvenience himself, mm-hmm. not to worship, mm-hmm. to actually have greater breakthrough and momentum yes. in worship. So yes. it was like the argument that people throw down all the time is like, well, you don't, do you need a guitar to worship? No. Do, do you need music? Yeah. No, no, you don't actually need that. You're right, you're correct. Right. However, you know what I'm saying? There's like mm-hmm. this other portion where you see the fruit of it in, mm-hmm. of it in his life, mm-hmm. where he's like willing to go through that, that process. It's literally an inconvenience yeah. just to, what's the word? Um, not accentuate, but enhance. Yeah. It was purely to enhance his worship yeah. because like it, it shows where his priority was. Yeah. That like, it, I just imagine the modern day equivalent would be like, you know, basically bringing our having a guitar strapped to my back in a subway yeah because when i get to my job yeah i have the ability to just sit and play and worship the lord i could just sing yeah and that would be fine you could read i could just read you could just mm, jesus <laughs> i know and that would be great i'd still be man after god's own heart yeah but it's just something about that extra like more than what's required and yeah. i think in this season you know it's just it's all there for us to engage the heart of the lord and to come into these midweek gatherings, these online yeah. gatherings, whatever it looks like as, as, I just think it's so important we don't run away mm-hmm. from these moments of corporate expression, whether it's because maybe some of us are ashamed of how this season has gone for us, or maybe some of us are scared to get back together again. Yeah. You know, and I understand that we all have to use wisdom, we all have to lead, be led in the way we feel like we're being led. Yeah. But I think we just have to run to them. Yeah. And as much as we can, let's create that momentum so that when we do get to the time where it's time to like go together and see God move, we're able to fly higher because we're already paddling. We've already got speed. So when that wind blows, it's just. Yeah. And I think, I think maybe to even give people the context, like I know your heart in this, like isn't about just that we can have like crazy corporate worship times. Like, you know what I mean? Like in my heart too, like when I talk about, when I, when we're like, dude, like develop that personal breakthrough, come to church, come to a gathering, a midweek gathering, a church service, whatever it is, come to that with breakthrough yeah. and add to the momentum that's taking place. It's not just so that we can have a successful meeting. No, like no. There is, there's legitimately places of breakthrough for our church and for our community yeah. that corporately, when we come together, the breakthrough that's achieved, it actually shifts things mm-hmm in our city, Mm -hmm. in our region, Mm -hmm. for individuals that are there in that meeting, Mm -hmm. the the amount of like healing and breakthrough Mm -hmm. and marriages that get transformed, lives that get, addictions that are broken through those places of just like tremendous corporate breakthrough in worship is is incredible. I mean, there's a a, a giant list of those sort of testimonies. Oh yeah. And, And even beyond that, for me, the biggest thing is that we get to experience God's presence. Amen in a deeper and more profound level. Yeah. I mean, like legitimately, I, it makes me so excited and yeah. so just like, I just want that. Yeah. I just want to lean in. I want to see his glory. Yep. I want to experience it yeah. like I, like in deeper ways. Like it's, I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I, know, I know that's where your heart is in that. Oh, so I just, it's like, I just want to speak to that because I know people mm-hmm. are like, oh, you guys just want to have a good service when you come back. <laughs> like, no, I don't care about that. I don't, neither do yeah. I. Like, I. I really don't either. <laughs> for us and for Jamie, for all of us, you know, like at our most foundational level, yeah. we want to please the heart of God. Yeah. And I believe that like more than anything that a group of people, we just took Kingdom Life Church, mm-hmm. this like amazing tribe of people like stewarded this season. Yeah and stewarded themselves into momentum and breakthrough in the spirit, Mm -hmm. just like David did in the hillsides. Yeah. That when we kind of emerge and we're together, like the strength of agreement, it's almost like I can feel the pleasure of God. Yeah. And the joy it brings his heart. Mm -hmm. I think good stewardship brings him joy. Yeah. You know, the, the idea of, you know, this season, 
it's like we were given X amount of talents and some of some people maybe just buried it in the ground to just hopefully make it through but mm -hmm. we're investing in that place of worship so that we come yeah. back to him when we corporately gather mm -hmm. and it's like look how we multiplied the investment yeah. of this season yeah. and I so primarily I want to please his heart and then in the secondary motivation for me is I want to create a place for him to dwell yeah and I don't want I don't want like I don't want I want fullness. Yeah. I want how, however much, whatever the metric is of, you know, of how much or the quantifiable amount of himself yeah. that he'll give on the earth. I want as much as we can humanly handle. Yeah. I want, I literally want a flipping glow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah. want our building to glow. I, I've yeah. been in places, places like Bethel, places like, you know, different, you know, hubs of revival, Toronto in the, in the nineties and yeah. even uh, places in New England, like, you know, um, different churches have experienced incredible moves of God where there's an abiding presence of the Lord where even when nobody's in the room, you sense his manifested active presence. Yeah. Rooms where I've walked into and there's nobody in the room and just walking in, I start to see with my own eyes, angels zipping back and forth. Yeah. There's something in that where that you, you actually build a long standing altar to the Lord. Yeah. And he's so moved by what happens in a time period that his presence remains there. Mm -hmm. So I want that continually. Yeah. yeah. It's it it's it's that shift of um like when we think about like the tabernacle, you know, the Holy of Holies, and we think about like David's tabernacle, mm. so worship surrounding it, like it yeah. creates, it creates this, this, this Holy of Holies sort of environment mm. area where it's, it's, it is the like, um, not to be like super like, I don't know, cheesy or anything, but it's a mercy seat. It's like yeah. the mercy seat of the Ark of yeah. the Covenant where it's, yeah. it's actually built through our praise and worship, right. through us laying down our lives, sacrificing right. in worship, and it actually creates this seat that God's glory can rest on. Yeah. And it's not a visitation, it's not just a, a once, right. one-off sort of like crazy right. moment, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. honestly, like that's like, dude, you want you want to bring some tears and some like <laughs> like stuff from me, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah. We go down that road, man. I'm gonna be a wreck. <laughs> no, same. It's that's what that's dude. what the ark was. The ark yeah. was God's presence in the yeah. earth, yeah. and it wasn't dependent on what was happening around mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It simply was God in a box, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was Him yeah. there, and so in the same way, we want that. It's the mercy seat. It is like it's now. It's just the cross that made a way for mm -hmm. that for that eternal kingdom reality to be manifested all the time yeah it's as if the ark is in our is it's in us but it's like yeah. it's as if the ark is in this building all the time yeah you know and, and that's that's the heartbeat that's what we want and so we do that same thing in our homes yeah and yeah. hopefully that like i i want to I, I want to get back together and just get in these wild places of worship and i feel like this is reminiscent of what i do at home yeah and I don't yeah. want to value one over the other. Yeah. I want to have this equal value, yeah. seeing how they both like produce things, not just in my own life, but do things to the heart of God. Yeah, I think something that like really stands out to me, sort of thinking about it in this context, um, is when we went on this songwriters retreat. Mm. And I know, like as a as a community of like worship, the, like the worship community worship team members, all, like all the different people. When you guys, when we do our team meetings, it's like that. There's this sort of explosive place of worship and just crazy breakthrough. But that first evening we, um, I mean, there was 20? Uh, just about. 18, somewhere in there. Yeah. And it's it's something that like, it's crazy people that aren't, that weren't maybe able to be there or you just hear about it. it to try to describe it, it just, it doesn't do it justice. Yeah. But it's like you have this group of people that have been stewarding worship in their life yeah. like all the time constant it's like the biggest passion in their life yeah. you know it's, it's not birds. totally yeah. and it's not just music it's legit right. worship you know yeah. and like they come together in a room and what's like you hit the it was in you hit the first chord and it's like no one is waiting for anyone no one is waiting for any sort of direction put your hands up kneel down stand up none of it it's mm -hmm. automatic this thing it's like ripped apart in the room where every person is fully engaged, mm -hmm. pressing in, and the the spontaneity, the new song that's getting released from different places in the room where it's like, everyone sort of like leans into yeah. this song that's being sung, and, and Adam's play, play, just ripping it on piano, and he starts <laughs> yeah. singing it, everyone's like leaning into that, and then it, it sort of like yeah, flows it to another part of the room, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and it was just like wave upon wave upon yeah. wave, mm -hmm. and you can you can see the difference yeah. when you have a room full of people that are like constantly pressing into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. on a regular basis. And I think that like when I think about church on a Sunday morning, that's what I want. Yeah. And I you know what I mean? I know yeah. that's like Jamie, you, I know all of our team members are like that that's what they want. Yeah. Is like a, a group of people that have so pursued it when they gather together. Yeah. There's like nothing that, that holds it back. There's nothing that can stop that kind of place of yeah. I, mean, I mean, I was a wreck. I was in tears trying to play the cajon. Just like, I was a mess. I was such a mess. It was so good. Yeah. Such a good mess. It's just... It's <laughs> good mess. Scream singing, <laughs> no voice, yeah, out of man. key. Like, you know what I mean? I just was like, yeah. doesn't even matter, yeah. you know? After it. Yeah. I, I love it. And that that's, that's awesome. you know, I've... Man, I've been in, I've been in rooms. I'm sure you have too. I, yeah. I'm marked as a child. Yeah. Growing up in the Toronto the Toronto movement in the yeah. 90s, um, yeah. you know, being a part of a church of over a thousand people mm -hmm. and just hearing the sound, even though it wasn't engaging as a kid, but I still remember yeah. the feeling and the sound of just that one chord is played and all of a sudden, just, just the whole room, yeah, you yeah. hear laughing over here, screaming over here, <laughs> talking behind me, crying behind me, singing yeah. everywhere. and yeah. It's just this most beautiful, Discord. Yeah. It's every key at the same time. Totally. You know, it's <laughs> it's uh it's 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 like it's complete chaos. Yeah. But it's like absolute something about it just all feels so congruent and tied together and yeah. And I I so love the worship culture that we have at, at our church and yeah. I, I'm like I feel like we we get to those places so often but I love the idea that there's more yeah. for us, yeah. you know, and, really the, and even if you're not a part of our church or whatever, mm -hmm. if you're watching, whatever expression you're a part of, there's more. Yeah. There's just more in the sense of more of an ability to, to create momentum throughout the week yeah. and then get together and just partner together with each other's momentum and yeah. just soar yeah. and experience things in the presence of God that are truly life-changing yeah. and truly like just you're just doing a number on his heart you know you're yeah. just you're just working him for yeah. all he's worth <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> okay. um i would just one last question sort of i think i think where i'd like to wrap up yeah. kind of end this sort of discussion if that makes sense like talking about sort of like we're sort of bouncing back and forth between corporate personal worship and sort of the interplay between the two and stuff right um i think what would be if somebody is there and they're like, man, I, I, I wished I had that. I want to have that. Like, I want to have a like personal worship time. And like, it, yeah, for you musicians, you can just play and sing like, good job. Like, bravo. Like, what about, I don't know if that makes sense. If somebody like really wants to experience that, begin to step into mm -hmm. that, what would just be maybe some really just simple, practical things that they can begin to steward in their life, mm -hmm. whether or not they have musical ability or talent, beyond just putting on a YouTube song. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it could be that, but like, right. is there like a heart posture? Is there something they need to begin to develop that they're like, wow, this is where I can steward this place, you know? Mm -hmm. I think, I, I do think, I, you did bring up the whole YouTube, but like, I I love just using, you yeah. know, I, I, I probably am just as often, if not more often, if I'm just, intention myself to spend time with the Lord, I'm listening to something, either a worship album yeah. or, or YouTube videos or something, mm -hmm. probably more often than I am just playing mm -hmm. guitar and singing. Yeah. Because something for me, it just it just puts you in a position where it's like, sometimes as a worship leader, you can just get in your head about it and you yeah. just like, kind of like, I'm also a songwriter, so if I sing something cool that You're I like, like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> You know, so I'm like, it's thinking, hard to turn that off. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, if I really, honestly, like sometimes, not every time, sometimes if I yeah. really just want to be with the Lord, yeah. I'm just flipping on a record yeah. that I love. And I just, it's like I start to get into that zone. I'm like, oh, this is a cool, cool riff. Let me practice that. I need to make that smoother. Exactly. Exactly. Or like, exactly. Like, oh, that's a cool melody. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not all the time, but sometimes I'll go there. So, like, I'll do that. But honestly, I think you just have to view it as a long term investment, you yeah. know? And again, you want, it's this balance where like we're so grateful that he pours out his spirit and he mm -hmm. impacts our emotions and he encounters us and he changes us but like even if that didn't happen yeah. we would still be just as obliged 
yeah. to pour out worship because he's worthy. Yep. And so I think yeah. getting in touch with the reality of his worth mm -hmm. will actually help you sustain because there are going to be some times, there's plenty of times where I just sit down and I'll give Jesus an offering of worship and it, it just like feels distracted or hard or dry or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, maybe uh, the next day, all of a sudden I'm just like blitzed in the presence of God yeah. or something that I thought about or sang about or read about the the day before just all of a sudden boom so, so yeah. it's it's sometimes it takes you a little while to see the return on your deposit you know would you say it would be a sacrifice <laughs> yeah. of praise sacrifice of praise sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes sometimes it's, it actually feels that way yeah sometimes it yeah. feels like i gave that to you it wasn't like the funnest thing in the world but i gave it to you <laughs> Yeah. And that's the point is that yeah. I gave you the affection. Yeah. Um, you know, imagine if I only, you know, gave my friends or my wife affection when I felt like it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that's such a selfish way to live. Like yeah. believing that everybody around me exists to make me feel good. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy yeah. that we would feel that way about anybody. But um, especially about God, mm -hmm. who we owe more than anything to. Yeah. He owes us nothing. Yeah. He owes us jack squat. He promises us a lot. Yeah. Uh, but he owes us nothing. Yeah. But we owe him everything. And so I think like finding that place of reality, mm -hmm. I think scheduling it. Yeah. Put it getting in your smartphone or your calendar, or whatever, yeah. and actually scheduling this 30 minutes I give to the Lord. Um, making the Bible a part of what you do. I think I think it's okay to like have your environments that are easier to focus. Some people meet God outside. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. I'm one of those people give me a room with no windows <laughs> because when I hear birds, I get distracted. <laughs> I do. So it's like I like a room like this is perfect for me. Yeah. Give me a room where I know nobody can hear me because I just a yeah. mess. mess. Yeah. Nobody can see me because I'll probably start doing cartwheels. Yeah. You know, like give me just like complete isolation. Yeah. Com like nothing else is happening. Yeah. That's like where I meet with the Lord. So like be aware of the kind of the natural stuff of how you meet with them. Yeah. That's awesome. That that makes me just honestly makes me want to go right now. Just like check out. Later more. guys. Yeah. We're going to go be with Jesus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I know. We awesome. Do. Well. Awesome. Dude, that's it right there. You guys have a wonderful week. Invest in that time. Come on. You know, spend that time, that sacrifice of praise. It does. It does cost us something. Yeah. It, costs us, it should cost us something. Yeah. And, um, but when we get it together, worth it. it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. You guys have a great day. Love you guys.